Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to Round 5 coverage of my games from the 2018 Western States Open held in Reno, Nevada. Uh, so Round 5 was held uh, Sunday morning at uh, 9.30 a.m. I remembered to get my cup of coffee before the game. Um, I, I didn't have a great night's sleep, so I'm, I'm starting to feel maybe a bit uh, sleep deprived at this point. And, well, we saw that in my previous game in game four, so maybe it's more accentuated here. But this actually was a very interesting game. There weren't, uh, there weren't actually many big blunders. So um, my opponent here, uh, I have the white pieces, my opponent with the black pieces is rated uh, 1972, and my rating for the tournament is 1861. So this is the strongest opponent that I've faced so far in this tournament. And, um, you know, when I have the white pieces, I, I usually play with e4, d4, and c4 in that order. Uh, but this time I decided to switch it up and play with knight f3 instead of c4. That's an opening I've been playing around with quite a bit in Blitz and, uh, and occasionally in over-the-board games. I'm starting to feel comfortable with it. So this can lead to a reti or it can still transpose back into an English. My opponent plays the interesting reply uh, e6. I don't know where he's going with this yet, so I stay in reti lines with uh, g3, and here he plays f5. So that was uh, his intent. He didn't intend to play a d5, but he intended to play f5 and go for a Dutch defense. Um, so I obliged and played d4. I think that's the main move here. Um, also, I just didn't know what else to play. I think d4 is a very logical move in this situation, though. Opening up a line for this bishop, obviously this bishop is going to this diagonal, and uh, or to this uh, Fianchetto square, and then I'll castle. So um, I think it's a reasonably harmonious development. It is the top move uh, at this point in the database. Let's see, he goes knight f6. And now I played a move that's uh, rare here. Let's uh, first of all talk about how we could get to a normal Dutch position. So bishop to g2, uh, bishop e7. Black is going for a classical Dutch setup. Black could also go for a stonewall with... Um, d5, but bishop e7 is a classical, that's similar to what he played in the game. Um, c4, black castles, I castle, and then uh, d6, and knight c3. So um, this uh, is a very interesting position. The chess engine likes white here a fair amount, I think because of the extra space that white has, but uh, black is very solid here. He's controlling a lot of squares in the center, and uh, and it's a closed position, so black will have time to uh, maneuver his pieces around and get them into the game. So it's an interesting way to play, and um, I uh, have not had such great luck with it. I, these kind of closed maneuvering positions are not my uh, strong point, and uh, so I was looking for something a little different, and I decided to play bishop g5 with the idea of just trading that bishop off. Here, let's uh, go forward a few moves. He plays bishop e7. I go bishop g2, he goes d6, I go c4, he castles, and I play knight c3. So we've got, as, uh, as I showed uh, in the previous line, a very similar kind of position in terms of white setup, just with the uh, bishop out here. Um, now the, um, the trade of that this bishop for this one, I think is is good for me. I have I have a strong bishop here, and uh, and uh, black's light squared bishop is not uh, not so well developed. But I was planning to trade it for the knight as well. Even if he had, for example, played h6, I would have played this. Bishop takes, bishop takes, and then uh, castles or maybe uh, e3 to shore up the center. And I, I would have been happy to play this position. The point is that uh, in this kind of closed position, the bishop pair advantage that black has. Uh, isn't so pronounced, and these knights are often uh, more useful in a closed position. They can hop around and find little holes in the pawn structure, places to sink themselves into. Anyway, it should lead to an interesting game, so I was going to play that. The chess engine, by the way, rates this as about even, so it thinks that uh, white had a stronger advantage playing, playing classically rather than playing this way, but I would be okay with this position. Uh, instead, he played a move, black played a move here. Instead of kicking my bishop, he played a move that surprised me. He played knight to e4, just offering that trade of uh, bishops. So, But first I had to calculate, is, this, uh, is there some kind of trick here? So, for example, if I take... That's my turn, right? Yeah, I take... He grabs... He could think about this move, knight takes c3. So uh, he's got a piece, I've got a piece, and the queens are under attack. 
Uh, but this turns out to be okay for me. I had, but I had, did have to calculate this line uh, during the game, knight takes, because the bishop can escape here. Uh, let's see, he can escape here. Then I can play a move like rip to c1, defending the c-pawn, keeping that knight from getting easily back into the game. And um, so at this point, he's got a, uh, a d-pawn that's hanging. The material is still even, but um, his knight is a bit out of play, and it's going to be easier for me to get my bishop back into the game than it is for... Uh, black to get the knight back into the game. In fact, the chess engine gives quite a huge advantage to white at this point. I'm not quite, quite sure I see it all, but uh, definitely white has better pieces here and better development. Yeah, I, I guess that's a key point, is that uh, the queen side here is still undeveloped. So um, anyway, he didn't go for that after I played bishop takes e7. He just took back with the queen. But that surprised me. Like I said, I thought this trade of bishops was uh, okay for me. Uh, good for me, actually. Um, so at this point, I castled. And um, and the chess engine says I actually should have traded off that knight uh, rather than letting him take. I wasn't uh, too concerned about him taking on c3. Uh, that doubled pawn also gives me an open line for my rook. So, you know, it's uh, got, uh, there's two sides to that move. Um, but the chess engine thinks I should take here. And... Uh, take back. I had, I had actually calculated this line, because if I can round up that pawn, um, this would probably be good for me. But he can defend it with d5. Um, and the chess engine gives this line with queen b3. So um, he has to, I guess, bring a rook over to continue to defend the, uh, the d pawn there and hold on to the center. So maybe my pieces are a little more harmoniously placed. I do have an edge in development here. Uh, once again, these pieces haven't, haven't yet been developed in the queen here will uh, force him to play another move before he can develop the bishop. Um, you know, maybe also, maybe he could just play c6 and defend it that way. But in any case, I didn't see myself uh, winning a pawn there, and, and uh, so I just decided to go ahead and castle, and if he wanted to take on c3, I was going to let him. And he chose to take there. So we've got two pairs of minor pieces traded off. I've got a bishop and a knight, and he's got a bishop and a knight. Uh, my pieces are developed and I'm castled, but um, I have taken on some pawn damage. And also, it's still this closed position that you get with the Dutch. So the fact that he's uh, behind in development is not such a big deal. And in fact, uh, this, this position is uh, fairly well balanced, maybe a slight edge to white, but nothing to speak of. Um, and then he pushed on with e5 here. <laughs> this move is actually a mistake, and it's kind of an interesting one. So if you want to uh, take a moment to uh, check this out, can you find the uh, best move for white in this position? Okay, I'm going to give the answer away now, so pause the video if you want time to think about it. Um, it's a pretty simple idea here. I just take this pawn and uh, bring my queen here with check, and I just uh, win a pawn. And uh, in fact, if he blocks with the bishop, I have a choice. I can take uh, the b pawn, which the chess engine likes, or I can take the d pawn. Uh, but anyway, this is good for me. I mean, it's true that I'm saddled with these ugly, isolated, doubled pawns, but, uh, you know, I'm a pawn up, too, and um, still have that edge in development. And as things open up, uh, that may become more of a factor. It looks like I'll get some nice pressure along this diagonal coordinated with the rook. So that would be great for me. Um, the funny thing is, uh, I really did not think about it, and he probably did not think about it too much either, because he's a strong player. He could have spotted that tactic if he thought about it. Um, so he should just play something like uh, knight to c6 here. That would be a normal move. Continue in the same lines. Um, after e5, you know, I really didn't think about that exchange, because I thought... Uh, well, leaving these doubled behind pawns behind is just terrible. So I kind of uh, rejected the move out of hand, and maybe he didn't consider the move seriously either for the same reason. But uh, sometimes you have to overcome your prejudices <laughs> and uh, and just uh, look at uh, at what are the opportunities. Um, and uh, as as I said, the uh, after the exchange and the win of the pawn, I actually am in a pretty good position in addition to being pawn up. I also have open lines, and I just have to uh, overcome my uh, uh, dislike of these doubled isolated pawns on the C file. <laughs> so it's funny how I, I just didn't even consider the move. 
Anyway, so I played the move rook b1, and we're back into lines that are about even. He pushed on with e4, dropped my knight back to d2, goes knight d7. I go f3. I wanted to kind of bust up this uh, pawn structure in the center. The chess engine does not approve of this e3 move, this f3 move, because it thinks black should follow up with uh, e3. I really was not sure how this would work out, but the line the chess engine gives looks pretty good for black. Uh, push my knight over here, um, and then f4, just kind of squashing my uh, pawn structure. Now I can try and open things up along this diagonal. This uh, is a square I might use for the knight or the queen, but uh, he gets to activate his uh, knight. I can lift my queen up. You know, I, I want to try and win this pawn if I can, and uh, you know, avoid being squashed over here on the king side. Um, but uh, actually, after I take it, he can win it back, and this is looking pretty good for Black. After he wins this pawn, you know, the queen can come over here, bring pressure. The, the bishop can come in. Um, so this is all good for black here. So that is uh, a chance for black to uh, take the uh, advantage there. And uh, other lines don't work out as well. I was just, uh, that was not necessarily the chess engine's best recommended line, but the way I was thinking of playing that. And it looks like it leads to trouble for white. So instead of uh, pushing with f3, I really should block that pawn first with e3. Um, anyway, but I went with f3. And he didn't go for that line. He went uh, with knight f6. So it was probably a situation where he had already planned this knight maneuver in advance and didn't really consider a lot of other moves as long as knight f6 was good. He was going to go for it. So that is actually a, a fine move. It's just that e3 was better. So I take, he takes, um, and then I go queen to c2. I'm starting to uh, pile up on this uh, d pawn. I thought it might be a little bit difficult for him to defend it. So I was thinking... Uh, I'm doing pretty well here. He goes uh, rook to e8, and I go rook to f4. Now, before I played this rook f4 move, you know, I realized how lifting a rook like that might be <clears throat> dangerous, uh, might get kicked around, and, you know, so I considered how he could kick it around, um, and I, I looked at this move knight to uh, h4, but then I can just take here with my rook, and it all looked good to me, so I went ahead and played rook f4, and then I was surprised when he played this move g5, <laughs> so I just actually had not considered it. So I mean that kicks my rook back, it has no square to go to, those are all covered, the knight covers that square and the pawn covers those squares, and I think this is once again uh, attaching too much uh, value to these positional considerations, but uh, you know it, it kind of loosens things around the king side, so it's weakening the king side. But um, but it does kick me back. My best move here is really rook to f1. And uh, the game would continue. It's still about even. It's not like uh, anything horrible has gone wrong. But there's no immediate way for me to exploit this, this uh, slight looseness of the king side. Um, yeah, it just seems like he's got a pretty good grip on the position here. Um, not a grip on the position, but he's got a good control of the squares around his king, I guess, is the way to put it. Um, so I didn't uh, play that. Uh, you know, I've been looking for an opportunity to play an exchange sacrifice in my games because I don't uh, get the opportunity that often and I wanted to try it out um, whenever I got the chance. And uh, this looked like an opportunity to me. I thought, uh, well, he's weakened his king side a bit by playing g5 and I can take this knight here and uh, grab a pawn. So I get a pawn for the exchange plus a slight weakness of his king side, maybe that's a good enough compensation for the exchange. So I went ahead and played this way. And now, objectively, I looked at this with a chess engine. Uh, it's not a good enough compensation. It's, it's a little bit... Um, when you have the exchange, when you've uh, given up the exchange, you have the minor pieces. And what you're hoping for is that your minor pieces are going to be more active than the, the rook that's uh, in the corner. This is like this rook over the corner represents black's extra force. But uh, my minor pieces are here closer to the action and it'll take a move to get his rook into the game a move or two. But it just turns out in this particular position that... Um, so anyway, if you have that activity of your minor pieces, maybe some slight weaknesses, then uh, the exchange sacrifice can be good. Um, but in this case, uh, it takes me a little while to get my pieces organized. I mean, they're out, 
but they're not uh, really uh, doing a whole lot. For example, the knight comes in here to f3 to try and hop into the king's side. Um, this pawn is, is defended at the moment, and, uh, and so these squares, these three squares that the knight might go to, are all under uh, black's control, so it's not so easy for me to, uh, to make progress beyond that point. So uh, anyway, I had to uh, find some moves here. Let's see, it's Black's turn though. He dropped his queen back to uh, e7. And this is another point is that Black does have pressure along the e-file here. If I were to move my knight or my bishop away, uh, this e-pawn is hanging. Um, so my extra pawn is not as strong. If It would be different if my bishop were already back here and this pawn were already on, uh, on e4. I might have uh, more, but that takes me a couple moves to get to that. And that gives uh, Black time to unwind. Anyway, after queen e7, I start with uh, rook f1, bringing my rook over here. Uh, the chess engine actually is recommending king to g7. We'll see why in a minute. Um, played rook f1, but in any case, it gives the advantage to black here. I play rook f1, he goes c6. So he's uh, preparing to develop his bishop, so he's uh, shutting down my bishop on that diagonal so I don't win another piece. Um, I drop my bishop back to d3, so I'm thinking about this maneuver. Um, and also, I need to defend this uh, e-pawn so his queen can't grab it. Um, and he plays bishop h3. So that's the move. If I had played my king up to g2, I think I said g7, but I meant g2, of course. If I played my king up to g2, then this move would not be possible. But now he gets this uh, bishop in this annoying position here. I play rook to f2, and he goes rook to f8. So these exchanges uh, help black if, if he just uh, trades off rooks and gets his other rook into the game um, then he's just uh, an exchange up well for a pawn but uh, keeping keeping a pretty good edge because also he has this uh, bishop around my king here so he's got he's got some compensation now um, so I didn't want the trade I blocked with knight f3 and now this is a little bit of a, a tricky move in a way I was kind of hoping to or hoping to tempt him to push that pawn forward with the idea that, well, I move the knight away, um, he can exchange rooks, but then his bishop is a bit cut off. It's blocked in by the pawn. I was thinking, oh, that, that, that might be a, a nice way to uh, get turn this game uh, in my favor. So he didn't uh, play that way. He went rook f7. And uh, I went queen d2. Um, Let's see, what's the chess engine recommending here? I, I did look at one other line here, the chess engine recommended. I might not explore, this is a long game, so I might not explore all the options that the chess engine pointed out, but this is kind of interesting. C5, D5, closing things up, uh, allowing the exchange like this. Yeah, it's just an unusual way of playing. I, I would not have thought of playing this way because it allows him to activate his piece, uh, his, his uh, rook that... Uh, but he can chase me around like this. But I do get um, a very good knight here, and apparently my king is pretty secure over here, and I still have my extra pawn. <laughs> so anyway, I just thought that was an interesting way to play. And that's the uh, chess engine's recommendation. Uh, let's see. I went with uh, queen d2 here. I'm, I'm targeting this uh, g pawn still. He played the move uh, rook a to f8. So yeah, I was kind of expecting this. Uh, now he really is threatening to push that pawn forward and uh, and win a piece. So it won't matter so much if his rook, if his bishop is trapped in, because he'll win a whole rook. But uh, before I played that queen d2 move, I had, I had calculated this line and I had an idea here. So uh, and it turned out I checked it out with the engine later. It turned out uh, what I play here is actually the best move. So uh, can you spot the idea that I had here? Okay, uh, pause the video if you want time to think about it. I played the move uh, knight takes g5. Yes, giving up another exchange, but getting another pawn. So I've got, I'm down two exchanges, but I've got two pawns. And, um, you know, I, get the, I give up the rook, but I get the bishop. And also the knight on this square controls f2, which is very important because <laughs> then I don't get checkmated. He can check me once, but then, uh, but then he didn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't have the follow-up uh, rook to... Uh, Rook to f2 mate, because the knight is guarding that square. But, uh, well, he found a good move here. He played queen to g7, because my plan had been to play knight to f4, uh, shutting off this rook, 
from its uh, defender and uh, forcing it maybe to an awkward square. Uh, but now with this queen on g7, there's a pin. <laughs> and so if I play knight to f4, he can just take it. So I came up with this idea. I came up with uh, bishop to e4, and I'm going to just play that to uh, f6 here and block his rook out. So we play it to f3 and block his rook out. So he dropped his rook back to f6. I went ahead and played this anyway just to kind of shut down these, these uh, threats on the f-file here and free up my uh, knight. But now we can see, um, <clears throat> you know, if we talk about the exchange sacrifice, I'm down two exchanges at this point, and he did manage to get his uh, rooks uh, activated. Um, but on the other hand, there, there's still something to be said for my position here. His king is a bit exposed, and, uh, and so the game continues. Uh, let's see, he went queen h6, went uh, queen d3. I don't want to trade the queens. Um, <laughs> the uh, Yeah, well, once again, the chess engine finds an interesting way to avoid the queen trade. It plays knight g8, uh, knight g5, rather, and then, say, rook e8, uh, h4, defending the knight there with a the pawn. That is actually kind of an interesting way to play, securing the uh, knight on a good square, and then now my queen can, can move away. Uh, do something else. So uh, th that would have been interesting. Anyway, I just simply moved away. Uh, let's see, he went queen g6 here, offering the trade again, and I blocked with the bishop. So he can't can't continue to offer that queen trade. He played queen h5. I dropped with the bishop. Now, I, I realized I was not in such great shape, and so I was willing to settle for a draw at this point. Um, but he decided to go active, and he brought his queen over here to the, king's, uh, to the queen side, looking at this pawn. So I defend it once, plays queen a4, looking at uh, two pawns now, this pawn and this pawn. And I decide to hold on to the center and give up this a pawn. There, there are some downsides to taking that a pawn. So he didn't grab it right away. He played the move h6 first, so exercising some cautious, cautious play here. He keeps my knight from hopping into this good uh, g5 square, now that his queen is kind of out of play. And then I push on with d5. Could have gone knight f4 there, but I pushed on with d5 with the idea of kind of uh, keeping the center shut and isolating his queen over here on the uh, queen side. He pushed on with c5, and then I go knight f4. And he grabbed the pawn. So I've given a pawn back. I'm down two exchanges, and I only have one pawn to show for it. But uh, his queen is on the wrong side of the board, and I have a, a very good move here. So uh, if you want to look for another uh, good move from white, you can uh, pause the video here if you want some time to think about it. I didn't check to see if this was the only or best move, but um, anyway, I think it is a good move. Um, I play knight to h5, and uh, probably an obvious move too, but uh, his his rook uh, is has trouble finding a good square. If it goes to the right or the left, I just take it, and if it goes up or down, my queen can come into this square, queen g6. And uh, he can't block the check. If he goes here, I can check again. If he blocks the check now, I can grab this rook. So the king goes here. I could even just go for a perpetual. But uh, actually, if I grab this pawn, uh, I'm actually ahead. Uh, the, the, uh, now that I have these threats, these passed pawns in the center and an active, uh, active pieces, and his queen is a bit out of play, this is uh, good for me. Uh, now, I do have to worry. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I have to worry that uh, everything is happening. Yeah, yeah, here's the other point, too, uh, which I thought was kind of interesting, is that um, this queen a2 move came with a threat, which is to uh, take this um, bishop. And so uh, when I played knight h5, I had to calculate this line, too, that... Uh, Rick takes uh, Rick takes um, f3 doesn't work. Now I can't take the rook and my queen is under fire, but uh, this is uh, just leading to a mate. <laughs> so uh, this is good for me. Uh, let's see, let's check here. Oh yeah, that's just a mate straight away. So I had to see that. So um, anyway, I just wanted to point out that when, uh, when black took on a2, he was setting up this threat. Uh, potentially against my bishop. So I had to had to calculate that before playing knight h5. 
Um, so anyway, he played a good move here. He did not move his rook. He just dropped his queen back. Um, let's see, it went back to a4. I had it right the first time. The queen went back to a4 so that it could uh, come in along this uh, light squared diagonal. Um, and so, well, I, I get the exchange back. And so now I'm just down one exchange and I have a pawn for it. And, uh, you know, it's a bishop versus a rook and I have an extra pawn. But he does have the passed pawn over here. So black is still uh, better in this position, but uh, um, maybe had a stronger advantage earlier. Anyway, I went with uh, queen e4 here. I didn't want his queen coming into the back rank, but he brings a queen to uh, d7. The bishop g4 kicked the queen around. The queen went down to d8, and then bishop to e6 check. He went king h8. So that was move 40. We just uh, made the time control, and some of those moves might have been played a little quickly, but I had time to uh, think here, and uh, I came up with this idea of pushing my pawns forward on the king side. Also with the idea, when he doubles on the f-file again, I can drop my bishop back to uh, f5, supported by that pawn, and keep this avenue closed so he's not attacking my king. But black does start uh, counterplay on the queen side with uh, a5. And uh, so now it starts to get pretty tricky. I play queen c2 to stop the pawn from coming forward. He goes queen g7, uh, pinning this pawn and uh, maybe indirectly threatening the bishop. It's not a threat right away, but uh, because it's defended by the uh, by my queen, but he's probably going to follow up with an undermining move like uh, h5 there. So I played uh, h3, holding on to that pawn, and uh, let's see, he dropped his rook back to f8. He's going to bring that over to help support these pawns coming forward, and I finally, finally get my e-pawn forward. I also, you know, I have an extra pawn in the center, so I have a potential of a passed pawn over here and a passed pawn over here, and I'm going to try and play for that. Puts his rook on a8 behind his a-pawn, and I blockade the a-pawn for the moment with my queen. So he plays queen e7. He's bringing his queen over here to uh, try and chase my queen away. Um, I go king g3. He goes king g7. And uh, yeah, so we're going to just go forward a few moves here. This is a long game. And uh, I'm just kind of wasting time here um, and uh, seeing what he comes up with with the plan. And now you can see he finally came up with a plan. He's He moved his pieces back and forth a bit. And now he's bringing his king over. And he walks his king all the way over to the uh, all the way over to the king side. I did decide to all the way over to the queen side. I did decide to drop my queen down here at this point, and he played a4. I had this idea when I noticed his king was on this square uh, of playing something else. So uh, instead of uh, king g3, I had originally thought about playing this move, queen c1. He pushes. I can come over here with check, and I thought maybe I could get enough counterplay, but this does not work. Um, you know, I can I can get some checks, but he gets his king here to defend this pawn, and uh, you know I'm not going to be back in time to stop this pawn from queening. So uh, so this idea of going to c1 just did not work out for me, and uh, so I end up moving my king again. So we get some more shuffling. So I'm, I'm basically not doing anything here. I'm just moving my bishop back and forth and letting him walk his king over, and I'm just kind of seeing what his plan is. And uh, when the king went to b6 there, I gave the check with the queen, went all the way to a7, and I put my queen back over here. And now he plays queen e8. So he's defending, defending this pawn with his queen so that he can bring his rook in and down and chase, chase my queen back. So that's his plan now. But at the same time, He's put his king over here. Uh, I guess the idea was it's it's around all these pieces, so I can't uh, continually harass it, and now he is free to uh, push these pawns forward. But I can start pushing pawns forward on the uh, king side. So it's not uh, all over just yet. Go on with g5. He takes, I take. So I get uh, a passed pawn here on the g file. He gets his rook to b3. I drop back. He takes here with check. Drives my king forward and then pushes to a3. And I bring my king all the way forward to f5. I'm going to help this pawn come forward. And notice my bishop is controlling 
the square where the pawn queens. <laughs> so uh, it's still a bit of a dangerous position. Uh, let's see, he played queen h8. I went in with uh, king g6. And he played uh, rook to f3. And uh, this was a good move. This move, uh, you know, maybe that move with my king was a slight mistake, but he could probably have chased me there anyway with checks. Uh, now my king has no moves, and my king is in front of the pawn, so it's hard for me to make progress. But on the other hand, uh, it's actually hard for black to make progress, too, because his pieces are out of the way. But he has he has a plan here. So anyway, I played um, queen e2. I was chasing his rook to see where it was going to go. And uh, he didn't move the rook. He brought his queen in to uh, c3. So freeing up my king for the moment. So I step forward with the king. And then he plays queen d3, once again offering the queen trade. And I go over here to uh, h2. Notice that... Uh, of course, he has this rook h3 set threat, so it's important that uh, my bishop is covering that square. Um, let's see, but he does get to take here with check, and uh, I push my g pawn forward to block the check and also get one square closer to queening. So we both have uh, pawns that are two steps away from queening. Let's see, he went uh, rook f4 here, so uh, he's just uh, shuffling his pieces around a bit. Um, oh. He's also making this threat, rook here with check. So I have to get away from that. I went uh, queen g3. And here he went uh, queen f3. Actually, the chess engine says black has a winning line here with a2. So this is interesting. He pushes on with a2. I play uh, queen to a3 check. That's what I was thinking. It's kind of a, a trick to, uh, when I put my queen on the third rank, I was looking at this idea of the fork here, winning the pawn. Um, king steps away from the check. And I grab the pawn. The problem is he plays uh, rook f6 here. And now my queen is away from the action. And um, there's actually a forced mate here for black. So that is a winning idea for black right here, starting with that pawn push, sacrificing the pawn to, uh, uh, to distract my queen. And then rook f6, ganging up on this pawn, uh, is, 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 uh, leads to a mate. So anyway, it's not so easy to see. It's like a maiden six or something, but uh, it is easy to see in general that, that black has a strong attack with my queen on the wrong side of the board. <clears throat> so anyway, he, he played more simply. He blocked with the queen f3. I think this also keeps a winning edge here. Um, I dropped my queen down to e1. I was still looking to keep this idea alive of the check and grabbing the pawn if it comes forward. So he played uh, king b6 getting away from that check. And I brought my queen over here, queen b1 check. He brought his king back to c7. And I brought uh, my queen up to uh, b5. And now this is very dangerous. Uh, there's no immediate uh, mate threat from black. Um, that mating idea he had before is, is no longer there. And, um, and his own king is in danger of getting caught in a... Uh, and a net of perpetual uh, checks. So uh, there's only one move here, actually, that is uh, winning for black. Uh, other moves uh, lead to draws, probably through perpetual. So see if you can find the only move for black here. OK, I'm giving the answer away now. Uh, my opponent found it. He took his time and played rook to f8. And uh, you know, by now, we're actually up to move 74, and time, time pressure starts to uh, get in, uh, occur again, uh, because uh, you, know, you have to finish the game in an hour. After making the move uh, 40 time control, you have the, to worry about finishing the game in an hour. Um, anyway, rook f8 was a good move, and that, uh, that saves the day for black. So I can give some checks, I, and I do. Queen d7 check goes here. Um, I can take here with check. He goes in the corner. And now I was originally intending to uh, play here uh, with the idea of coming over here to check and taking this pawn if it comes forward. But I realized right here that, uh, that uh, black has a mating idea now with the rook on the back rank. So uh, if it were black's turn to move, do you see the, the mate threat? Uh, Okay, I'm going to give the answer away. If you want time to look at it, uh, you can pause the video here. But let's say, for example, I take the pawn, and he has this check on the back rank. Oh, well, actually, it's quicker. Let's do it the quickest way. He has this check here. He just has to avoid uh, 
the square where the bishop controls. Uh, and then my king only has one move. And, uh, you know, I am attacking the rook, but the queen drops back, and that's a mate. So simple simple mate in two is, is threatened here, and I have to do something about it. So no time to grab this pawn. I have to come back. And then um, he played queen to f2, offering another trade. Um, I played queen to h6. There's still some ideas here. For example, uh, you know, I have two passed pawns. I managed to snag that pawn. And if somehow I can get him to trade uh, his rook for this pawn, I have I have chances of queening with this pawn where my king is. Uh, but he plays this very well. Let's see, he plays queen f6, which uh, in a way is aimed at discouraging me from pushing that pawn forward. Um, I go forward anyway. He takes, I take, and then he plays a key move here. He plays rook to d8, putting the rook in front of my other passed pawn. So... Um, I push this forward. Notice he can't take that pawn because this one queens. And of course his pawn is going to queen too. But I go to uh, d7. He gets a queen. And uh, I get a queen. Because, um, <clears throat> um, but it, this doesn't work out as well for me. If, anyway, well, I'll just show what happens. I get a queen. He takes. I take. And then uh, he brings his queen over with check. And then I resign at this point because his queen is stopping my other pawn from queening. Just if, uh, if we could back up a second. Um, if somehow I could have arranged it to uh, force him to sacrifice the rook for this pawn and queen this pawn, then uh, this would be uh, a lot better for me. Uh, even if I don't queen that pawn immediately, say I just have a bishop, a pawn, and a king, if I have these three, then uh, my king is always in a position to uh, threaten to queen that pawn, and his king is out of the way. So he may have to resort to some sort of perpetual. It's not so easy with my bishop controlling the queening square there. It's not so easy to stop me from queening that pawn. And if he has to give his queen for that pawn, then, uh, then well, I have, I have good winning chances, actually. But because, uh, because he gives up his rook for this pawn, it leaves me with... Uh, just this awkward situation where I have the king, the bishop, and the pawn, but it's the wrong pawn, and this check uh, just puts an end to the game because he stops me from queening. Anyway, it was a very interesting, uh, complicated game. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you next time.